Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today are Maria Nakaga. Yes, thank hey, you for Maria. having me. First time on the show, welcome. I mean, thank you. And Brady Gaster, <laughs> making his return appearance on the show. Thanks for having me back. And we're going to talk about the Smart Hotel 360 app. Um, this was the app that we used at Connect back mm -hmm. in November, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which is our annual uh, event to introduce all kinds of goodness. Mm -hmm. And this app was shown at Connect, and the source code is all available in GitHub. Yes, it is. And we're doing a number of uh, episodes where we talk about various pieces of the application. Mm -hmm. So last time, Erica Early and I did kind of the broad overview, and starting today, we're going to do some deep dives. And today, we're going to talk about the web app side of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so just to review, this is it. We've got a, the web app here, public web app running up in Azure, written with ASP Core. Um, which calls an Azure function to do some really cool stuff that we're going to look at. Mm -hmm. And then talks to a bunch of services. So booking a room and searching for rooms and all that stuff is running in microservices in a Kubernetes cluster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to do a separate episode on that part of it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that we understand that that type of stuff we're not going to cover today. We're going to talk about the website, right. um, which makes those calls. Um, and we're going to talk about the Azure Functions, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at some code and see what it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds great. All right, and and really what uh, what this demo kind of shows is kind of the lay of the land. It, it really kind of goes through a lot of the different components that we talked about at Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously talking about serverless functions. Yes. We're saving data and retrieving it from Cosmos DB database. Uh, and we're also using some really awesome APIs and cognitive services like the Computer Vision <laughs> API. Uh, we've actually got a tab open if you're interested in reading the documentation for uh, uh, the Cognitive Services Vision API. Here's the uh, product information and of course we have awesome documentation on DocsMSCOM yep. for everything, uh, all the different Azure APIs and SDKs you could ever think of or didn't even know existed. And this um, is uh, just to reiterate that this mm -hmm. is all shipping code. Mm -hmm. This isn't futures. Exactly. This isn't stuff that's coming down the pike. Yep. Everything yep. we're going to show, everything we're going to do is available uh, exactly. yep. today. Mm -hmm. Available today. We're uh, using uh, Visual Studio 2017 mm -hmm. latest refresh. Uh, you can mm -hmm. download it and uh, party on it all you want to. Um, but with that, I'd like to yeah. let you kind of introduce what we're doing here and talk about this ASP.NET and React app that we built for the demo. Oh, yes. Demo. So this is the app that we built, and I'm going to open it up. And this is a booking app. Mm -hmm. And it's something that people can relate to pretty much if you travel a lot for work. Yep. And this is a real world example. Mm -hmm. Real world, there are probably solutions that are just like this. Right. So what I'm going to walk you through is the ASP.NET Core 2.0 application. So this is all built in ASP.NET Core 2.0, which is our cross-platform open source framework. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite things about ASP.NET Core is one, of course, it's open source. I can use it and I can contribute to it, which is great. Okay. It's cross-platform where you know it works on my machine, will also work on your machine, mm -hmm. which is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I also really love the performance of it. It's really, really fast mm -hmm. as well. So that that seems to me that you know if I'm a ASP, obviously working at Microsoft, I think the fact that it's open source is critically important, and yeah. I know why. And mm -hmm. I think the fact that it's cross-platform is critically important, and I know why. But as a developer who has done a lot of ASP, uh, the full .NET framework, mm -hmm. maybe web forms, MVC, now I'm, I'm asking, okay, so for my day-to-day -day job, which is building a website, Maybe I care, maybe I don't care that it's open source. I'm not going to contribute to it, right. good Lord. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's cross-platform, but I only run Windows. Right. And yeah, I'll put it up in Azure, mm -hmm. which last time I checked was running Windows. So those two things don't necessarily uh, steer me in one direction or another. But the fact that it's more performant, now yeah. you're starting to get me interested. Right. Right. And if you wanted to have a full, you know, a containerized environment, you could put an ASP.NET Core app inside of a Linux container because yep. it'll run on that platform right. as well. So if you go down that route of containers mm -hmm. and you're going to run Windows containers, okay, the fact mm -hmm. that it runs on Linux doesn't interest you. But right. if you're choose to or guided to right. choose Linux containers, right. then the fact that it's that you wrote, wrote it in core means it'll just go there. Yes. You don't have to do anything exactly. different. So, And even better, if you don't want to rewrite your existing ASP.NET application in core, if it's just working great and you don't need to you know, change it around, you can actually bring that application up into mm -hmm. app service yep. or mm -hmm. into a you know, service fabric or some sort of container environment in Azure and run it there as well. And then extend to using things like serverless functions okay. and anything else you want. 
Um, so you don't have to, you know, abandon your existing, you know, investments in ASP.NET. You can just bring in and party. And so I think good. it's also important, and, and, and I think this gives us a great opportunity to actually switch to the code for a moment yep. before we run the cool. application. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest fear when I talk to a number of .NET developers who have been doing this for 20 years is that, why am I learning this? Do I have to learn something new? And it's made me really sympathetic because I actually came into ASP.NET Core. That was right. my introduction to .NET. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the controller, if you actually look at it, this does look like an app you have today, right? You have your controllers, mm -hmm. right? You have your models and your views. Like, it isn't different. We aren't calling it any different. Mm -hmm. It's not like now all of a sudden we have this thing called HTML pages, and right. then you have to put everything yeah. in there. MVC yeah. is still MVC. MVC Razor is still, still Razor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pattern will not change, and that's a good question. Mm -hmm. That is a thing. Like, um, I've invested all this time in getting to know Razor. Does Razor still exist? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does, right? So if you actually go over to the page, you have, maybe we don't have Razor in this particular, yeah, we do. It does mm -hmm. exist. It does exist. That's it totally does great. exist. Okay. So like, just not to panic. So right. I always tell people, do not panic. You are not learning a new skill. Right. Right. You're just enhancing the places that you can take your application. Right. Right. And then and this app is uses React for the client side. Yes. Right. Right. Um, we've done Angular before. Right. This one's written in React. Yeah. So you could use jQuery. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and really what we're doing, if you look at that uh, architecture, what you've got is, uh, you know, this uh, public web app is actually making calls into a back-end uh, containerized infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those calls are actually being made through the React.js, you know, libraries. You know, if you wanted to use Angular, you could do that as well. Um, if you, you wanted want to, to use Vue, you could yeah, do that. Yeah, you, you, you could do whatever you want. If, if you want to create a fork of this and change it from React to Vue or to Angular, feel free. We'd love to have, okay. you know, a couple of different versions of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Core is flexible now. Exactly. Completely flexible. You cool. can do whatever you want. Be flexible happy. and fast. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's. What else would people want to look at the controllers? As yeah, well? let's take a look, at the, have a look at the controllers. Because um, let's talk about the scenario here. Uh, you do a great job of walking yeah. through this scenario. Because so the scenario, and this will be a greater vision once yeah. you actually look at the application. Exactly. But the scenario is that you want to go and look stay at a hotel. Yes. And let's say you love your pet and you don't want to leave your pet at home. Mm -hmm. Does this hotel let me bring my pet with me? Mm -hmm. So the whole point is that you would actually go select your pet, mm -hmm. and see if your pet is allowed to stay or not. Mm. Okay. And the way we're able to figure out if your pet is allowed is, first of all, we're using cognitive services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And cognitive services using the Vision API is able to say, with extreme detail, it's actually quite spooky and scary, mm -hmm. uh, what your, if it is an acceptable pet. So you right. can actually set the premise of. And the website knows this because. because it, 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 what, what happens is, uh, it's like you can actually see here, what we're doing is we'll upload an image yep. and save okay. that and save that into, you know, so our So from the our, website, I'm yeah, going to upload an exactly. image of my pet. Exactly. And the vision service is going to be able to determine. Like what kind of a pet it is. What yeah. kind of yeah. pet it is. Right. So it, so it takes a look. So okay. this document that's currently on screen right here, you can see here that we've got a, we've got a property called message. And yep. message is so equal to null. Let's back up. What are we looking at right now? This is actually the Cosmos DB data that we've saved in previous uploads that we've done. So, so, so to back up. So in the browser. Right. I'm going to upload a picture of my pet. Exactly. Yes, which is going to go into Azure. Right. That is, is going to call an Azure function. Exactly. Yep. So the functions are basically event handlers. Right. right. And that function is going to call the cognitive vision services. cognitive service, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. which will look at that picture and right. say, cat, dog, right. something else. Exactly. Return a message to me telling me whether it's okay to bring this pet. Exactly. In the picture. Yes. Exactly. And in this particular case, you can see that this guy hasn't been processed yet. And one of the reasons we do that is we didn't want to add all that code to our existing ASP.NET application. The pets thing was like a feature we wanted to add later on. So, yeah, we're, so you could have, right? You could have, but, have, but you don't have to. Right. You could you could use something like functions or a backend service to do that processing for you, so you don't have to make so many. And that tweaks. way, if I upload a picture of the pet from my mobile app, right. I only have to write the code once, you got not it. have True. it in two That's different exactly places. Right. That's exactly right. But what we've got here in the Data Explorer, in the Cosmos DB Data Explorer, this is a guy that hasn't been processed yet. So this is a pet that I've uploaded that we haven't actually sent over to Computer Vision. This is one that we have. So if I click on yes. this second island right here, you'll see we've got this message, the message, a brown and white dog lying on the ground. So this okay. is a case where we've actually uploaded an image. So let's give this a shot and see if this yeah, actually let's, works Let's out. go and see what happens. See what yeah, All right. Sure. Okay. So let's go over the website and go walk through the experience. Right. So I am going back home to New York. So let's see. I don't know why I'd need a hotel. Maybe I don't. Maybe have they're friends. renovating your awesome. Yes, apartment. they're renovating my awesome <laughs> apartment. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to select the dates and I click apply. 
And it's only, are you bringing a pet? And I'm like, of course I am. So let's see what happens when I bring my cat. And I noticed that hotels don't really like cats, so they're biased. But let's see what happens. So I'm going to upload a picture of my cat. And it's processing it using Cognitive Services oh. Vision API. And then go ahead and hit F5. And if I hit F5, OK. So the code we're looking at right now is the Azure Function code, right. which we yes. are debugging from inside Visual Studio. Exactly. Very cool. Really and you cool. If we and, if it, you, very cool. and if you look over here and you look at the tags that it's fetched. OK. Is yeah. allowed contains yes. dog. All right. So, so I, if you look at the, the level of description wow. of what it brings back, it's a cat sitting. It's an animal, a uh -huh. mammal, gray, top, looking. And I was like, this is a bit, yeah. this is yeah. a bit spooky about yeah. how much it gives you an actual sentence describing yeah. the mm -hmm. image. But as you can see, we're looking for one specific tag, right. which we're is dog, dog. dog, which you know, means we're probably not going to have a, you know, a favorable result here. So if I just you click it. <laughs> I can't click from over here. I know, and we have too many hands on the, yeah, on the tools. Do. Go ahead and hit F5 one more time. All right. We'll let everything process. And if we were to flip back to the kill to, that. Yep. Oh, just do, let it keep running. Go back to the code. Yeah, it's okay. stuck on the four. Yeah, just take that breakpoint off. All righty. And then hit F5. There we go. Oh. Mouse issues. There we've we been go. setting breakpoints. <laughs> too many breakpoints. We've been run. debugging this too much. Yeah, we've been debugging quite no a bit. No such thing as too many breakpoints. That's true. That's true. So that should have finished running. And once that's finished running, you'll see that we have an error here. Ah. Yeah. So and there. It, look at the words that came back. And yeah. it had so many. It had mammal. It, it had gray. It a cat that is looking at the camera. It's very specific. So to the point. try cool. that again and upload. Uh, let's. Click from here. Uh, I will do the clicking. Do <laughs> not worry. Click. Let me click. Let It'll me do the clicking. Be my demo goddess. Um, so I'm going to upload a picture of a chihuahua. Mm -hmm. Right, and now it's doing the processing again. Right. Let's see if we can see what's happening in the back. And the other cool thing about this now is the website has a picture of your dog. Isn't that cool? So when you come to the hotel. They can say, well, that's not the dog you registered. Yes. You registered a Chihuahua. You brought a Great Dane. Right. Exactly. That's going to cost more. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you have you can see the description over here, mm -hmm. just saying it is allowed. And if we click cool. over the captions and we look at the results, oh, sorry, no, it's F over the tags. The tags. There we go. Whoa. Okay. Dog. It's Ooh, running okay. in the grass. It's that's brown. Cool. Isn't that cool? And that's, that's uh, again, the cognitive services sitting up in Azure. Anyone can play with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyone mm -hmm. can play with them. Mm -hmm. nice. And yeah. we actually leave, dis we leave descri descriptions in the GitHub repo on yep. how you can get up and running. I'll hit okay. five. Cool. Okay. And we'll see if it's allowed. Let's go back, back over back here. Room. And there you go. There we it's go. Allowed. But it wasn't carrying a Frisbee, but, right. but you know. Right. Close yeah. enough. Close enough. Well, so it was, was a dog. Is, exactly. It was a dog. Right. So it was in the distance, and they exactly. figured it out. Yeah. Exactly. So if we wanted to, we could go in and we could change the tag we're looking for and make it small, republish our function, and then you know any small mm -hmm. animal will, will show up. And then if you bring a big animal, as you said, you'll say this isn't what you uploaded. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Interesting. Um, one last thing I think we should show is where is this trigger actually happening in the code? Yeah. Totally. That's a big one. That's a big one. So in the code, and I hope it and is. And again, this is the function code. Yes. So if you are downloading it and you're using our repo, it will be the pet checker function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we go. So this is where we're calling the trigger. Got it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the trigger that we're lo looking for is a Cosmos DB trigger. So as you upload the picture, it's triggering a function, mm -hmm. which calls a Cosmos DB trigger. And it's Cosmos DB because it's a picture. It's not relational data. Otherwise, yes. you could right. use we have, we have a bunch SQL. Of, yeah, we have a lot of different document right. types. Like we have a document type for doing sentiment analysis, yeah. where we're actually okay. using cognitive services to analyze tweets. We have this information, which is a series of tags that comes back from cognitive services mm -hmm. that we can then you know, just store in our database. But we, we went kind of with a document approach. If you wanted to go with a SQL approach, that would okay. be fun too. Yeah. Do that. But for this scenario, it just made sense to do just more of like sense. a. And this is this is a, a, a awesome new feature that we have. Functions you could use you used to could trigger easily from a queue or from a blob or from a table that got updated. Uh, the Cosmos DB trigger is one of the newest triggers in the functions arsenal. So oh, cool, you know, yeah, it's okay. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's kind of the end to end kind of the flow of the public web app and, and one of my favorite features. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, try it at home with a teacup pig and tell us what you see. <laughs> so pretty straightforward. Yeah. Very straightforward. Which is 
good news. Mm -hmm. um, ASP Core, we mm -hmm. talked about why. We mm -hmm. looked at a little bit of the code written in React. We, we're not going to do a deep dive on React on this show. Mm -hmm. We may come back and, and do one. Mm -hmm. if we can find someone well-versed enough who wants to get on camera and do a deep dive of the <laughs> actual we could, React. We could ping uh, John Popper or Burke Holland. Yeah, we could, we could do that, okay. yes. Yeah, that'd be great. Because um, that would be kind of fun um, to actually look at the React mm -hmm. code mm -hmm. um, and, and walk through how it all works. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the creators for Vue actually works at Microsoft now. Oh, cool. Oh, there He's we go. on the Edge right. team. Nice. Yeah, so okay. plenty of people. Yeah. Cool, but, but, but as we said, you could uh, do the, the client side in Angular or anything else you want. Anything else, to. yeah. Angular, um, <coughs> view. View. I have to keep bringing And then we didn't look at a, at a lot of the code that does things like searching and booking and stuff like that because right. it's all running in containers right. and we'll, we're going to do a separate episode on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, another thing that we also have to remember that when people are watching this episode, it does relate to different developer teams within their company and how they can mm. work separately right. on mm -hmm. one application. Right. Right. So yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the whole series. Yeah, yeah that's actually that's an interesting point. Go back to the architecture diagram. That's a very interesting point. Because you might, you could have the web team. You're obviously going to have, you'd have the mobile client team. You have the web team. You might have the Azure team. Yep. And then for each of these individual pieces, bookings, suggestions, notifications, maybe they're all using C Sharp and .NET, but maybe not, yep. right? right? So you might have uh, some folks, the Java guys that are doing notifications and sentiment are writing that. Or in this case, they, they are. Right. Oh, I could say maybe they are. I could use the real ones. Tasks and reviews are in Java. <laughs> right. Suggestions and sentiment are in Node. Yeah. Everything else is in Core. Exactly. Right. Which I think is beautiful. Again, it's kind of the, uh, sort of the microservices approach right. is that each piece could be written by a different team, yep. and mm -hmm. then you as the web guy making calls to that just need to know you know mm -hmm. what endpoint Point. do I exactly. hit? Right. It's RESTful API. Right. Right. What endpoint do I hit? I don't care what is written in. Right. I just want. What do I send? Right. What's going to come back? Mm -hmm. Does it work? Who do I go yell mm -hmm. at when it doesn't? Mm -hmm. and you That's what I care about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the, 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 the other part that a lot of our customers care about, I definitely care about, is like how do you get all that up into Azure? Yes. Well, you could use our DevOps tools, all of our great VSDS mm -hmm. tools. You can yep. publish containers, package everything up, ship it up to the cloud uh, just by doing a commit. Um, and if you were to also tie in, we had a kind of a side demo of this that we uh, talked about doing, uh, where you can actually attach an App Insights uh, instance to your uh, app service running in Azure, mm -hmm. and then you can attach that to a VSTS backend. Yeah. So I could actually go into the portal. And this is kind of what we were yeah, talking we about doing. It took too long, so we didn't do it. <laughs> but uh, what we were kind of thinking about doing was, you know, I want to go and create a work item for myself because I want to allow all small animals that work item, you could do it directly in the portal and it would flow all the oh, way through. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then when you do a commit, you could reference it, the build happens, and you got the full end to end work, right. work, work life cycle. So it's great. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks for doing this. Cool. Thanks a lot for the time. All right, hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. Go check out the code, play around with it, let us know uh, how much more of a deep dive you might want us to do on this. Mm -hmm. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.